Kathy, EY has done a fair bit of research in diversity, and I know it's very much part of your culture. And what are some of the, the highlights that you can share with us in your recent observations at EY? Well, what we found is that it's really important that diversity start at the top, um, at the most senior executives of the organization. And the research has shown that in the leadership levels, when you have women diversity of at least 30% or more, they're have seen significant increases in business profitability up to 6% to the bottom line. So there is really a, a compelling business case to be looking at diversity in addition to all the other reasons that we spoke about in regards to the development of AI. And I, I think that's a really important thing to be considering. I'm personally involved in EY's Entrepreneur Winning Women Program as well as CEO two organizations that are involved in trying to assist women in that very early startup stage to provide not only some commercial support, but really what's really most important is that, that network of, um, of, um, of mentors and role models and just the, the network of individuals in the finance, supply chain, taxation, logistics, you know, all those things that you need to, to know as you build your organization. Yeah. Mentoring is so important. I think one of the role models that I see out in the industry right now is Carly Clossy, uh, who's one of the top American models. And so you've got this beautiful young woman who's in her early 30s who actually was a geek as a little kid. And she was a programmer. And she got discovered later on. And she really loves technology, so she, she set up an entire ecosystem now across the U.S. Uh, calling Coding with Classy. But the actual studios are bright and vibrant in color, they're inspiring, they've got a role model who also codes and has an interest in the whole wearable computing market as well. So, you know, I do think we have to think outside the box. We've got to engage all stakeholders. I think this is not simply a leadership agenda. I think there's an accountability with board of directors to really recognize that the talent pool and the diversity of the skills are brought to bear are going to have a tremendous impact on um, on the global economy. One of the number one things we need to do is to change the persona of what an AI developer is because this vision of some person who sits in a back room by themselves in front of a computer punching out code on a computer, that's just not how it's done these days. And you know, we need to bring people who have that communications background, you know, the faith backgrounds, philosophy, psychology, um, you know, you know, we have design, you know, we need to bring all those people to the table to basically help to design, because this is designing our future. Absolutely. And, uh, and if we don't, you know, we're going to get a future that looks like what someone would develop yeah. in the back room in front of right. a computer. It'll be highly biased and, um, and uh, the whole area of ethics as the, the software solutions are uh, developed and envisioned. Uh, to be very thoughtful. I think another area that we need to explore around um, diversity is just the issue around the data sets that are available because it's one thing for the, the developers and the perspectives that they bring to not be the diverse, but even when you think about AI, it's just going to have such a huge need for data. And if you think about the historical trends and in, in some of the um, inequities that we've had in the historical trends that are going to manifest themselves in our historical data. You know, what kind of impact do you think that's going to happen on or have to some of the AI that's developed? Well, I think, uh, un unfortunately, um, AI is often only as good as the quality of the data sets in terms of making those um, observations and patterning recognition. And we do have inherently a lot of biases right now already through uh, lack of diversity in the data sets. And so I think there's going to have to be a great deal of caution in um, advising people how these conclusions or these decision frameworks actually have been developed. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you being in the IT regulatory area, you know, EY is in an incredible position to actually provide new advisory roles, you know. I think it's just exciting to think about that parallel to the development of AI can be some. AI applications that you use to try to identify where those biases are occurring. Yeah. Using the automation to basically find where biases are manifesting themselves mm -hmm. into the AI. And I just, I don't see yet, there's been so much focus on the functionality side of AI mm -hmm. that I think we're just really underdeveloped in, in developing some of the the governance type of AI applications that need to be developed as well. Yeah, you just imagine an AI agent, uh, this is an interesting topic, on semantic linguistic interpretation by looking at the data and, and actually personifying 
the AI agent saying this is likely the highest odds of this persona is a male or a female or of this ethnic background or, right. of, or of specific preferences to actually then create the clarity of the biases inherently in the right. data. So I think, you know, I think as we go through this journey, there'll be more innovation.